So, today <coughs> let us see out the structural design of jackets. So, major structural components I have already told you. So, these are number one you find is the deck. So, decks are the major uh, structural uh, component where you load your uh, deck modules. Anyway, so uh, uh, let me tell you what are the different structural deck modules. So, this is one object where we have to concentrate. So, number two is the deck supporting structure. So, this has to be designed. So, in the previous class I was discussing that most of these platforms are the uh, the working platform is the deck. So, deck supporting structure has to be designed. Now, how you design that? So, that depends on the function functional aspect of the platform. And uh, below this you have your the what is called the underwater truss. Now, sometimes this is also called a template. So, deck underwater truss last is what? Last is your foundation. So, these are some of the major structural items <coughs> which we have to look at for jacket platforms. These are the four basic components. Now, deck I told you, now you be careful the uh, whenever you do the structural design. So, uh, you have to be thorough on what are the functional aspects of the structure. So, decks these are the what is called uh, deck design platforms. or deck the design and operational structures. Your main uh, operation is going to take place on the deck of the platform. So, next I will give you some of the loads that are acting which you have to consider. So, this you have to configure the decks. So, this you the f first thing that you use design the configure number and size of decks. <coughs> so, this has to be clearly thought about. So, I told you nowadays they do all this uh, general element uh, drawing in the AutoCAD. So, here you first fix up your uh, number and size of decks. Now, this is again based on the equipment uh, configuration that is your processing facility etcetera and all these things. So, you have to have some idea of the, the gas and uh, liquid processing that is flow process diagrams. So, this is actually the purview of your chemical engineer. So, if you go into any offshore company you will find Besides naval architects and offshore engineers, there is for flow process engineers. So, this depends on this. So, this is your first job. Okay. Now, you, you know, the first thing that you have to find out from the deck design is that area uh, configure number and size. Size, of course, this is your the area of decks. So, this is the first job. Now, after you have designed this design deck, design deck or rather you write design deck layout for safe operation. Safety is the prime consideration in offshore platforms because <coughs> it is dealing with oil. So, all these things I have covered in your deck design. So, no need to go into in details uh, of the uh, this layout configuration, how you 
do the horizontal and vertical layering, connection between the spaces, etc. All these things will come into play. Now, here actually you have to decide the decks whether you are going for a these two types of decks you will find. The one is called the modular deck. There is a modular deck and the other one is called a integrated deck. So, your structural design will actually vary on these two types of decks that are normally you will find in the jacket platforms, the modular construction or the integrated type. So, this I have already discussed. Now, in the modular deck actually first thing that you build is a module support frame or this is in short this is called a MSF. MSF is nothing but a module support frame. So, this has to be designed. Uh, now, now, this actually supports your different modules and where you are going to support the different modules is the that is the location. So, this is one type which I will elaborate the module support frames this is called the modular deck and the integrated type is uh, easy uh, the deck is in one piece. So, deck is normally decks are of closed box type construction, closed box type of construction. Now, actually from the point of safety the integrated deck is much more suit suitable because the uh, personnel on board the jacket they are safer from the uh, wave and other wind forces etc. You know, they people generally they do not like to work in a exposed environment. So, this is a sort of a enclosed deck, enclosed. So, the if you make a structure enclosed, so that is en going to enhance the safety of the structure and also from the naval architecture point of view, this will give you in case of capsize, this will give you buoyancy and stability. So, nowadays actually they design this type of integrated deck buoyancy and stability. Now, this is actually of prime importance not in the jacket platforms, but you will find this type of uh, is very very important in case of floating structures. In close remember the buoyancy and stability is only contributed by this is given by what by enclosed volume this you should remember. If the uh, volume has any large openings which through which the water can come and flood your hole in case of ships also this is also true in case of ships also then it is not to be considered in the calculation of buoyancy and stability. So, there are definite rules in the IMO for SOLAS which this you must have should have come across the definition of what is called enclosed spaces. And for more detailed study related to ships actually for floating structures, you refer to International Low Line Convention ILLC. I think all these things you should have come across. So, ILLC has stipulated guidelines for assignment of load line or the maximum draft of the ship which is based on again enclosed spaces. So, this is one of the major advantage of a having an integrated deck. So, which is more relevant to floating structures rather than fixed structures because fixed structures of course, they are not going to sink. Jacket platforms the only danger to jacket platforms will come in case of uh, column breakage. When column breakage if uh, that happens then uh, the deck is going to topple. Uh, so, then of course, you should uh, uh, actually um, in offshore you have to uh, uh, have certain what is called disaster scenarios. You have to create certain disaster scenarios. So, nowadays in case of major 
uh, structural engineering problem, they do this analysis. So in case of extreme, now in EO disaster scenario is always related to what is called the extreme load environment. Now, this is actually a very tricky subject. That means, a, in which condition the structure that is more so because of fixed platforms, because fixed platforms you cannot tow it away from site. Suppose a large wave comes, say freak wave or a tsunami has come, then the jacket has platform has to uh, this thing withstand the extreme load. So, in our ocean engineering calculations, most uh, in the most of the structural design or loads you have to take for extreme load calculations or extreme the extreme combination of loads. You may get load comma wave along with current. Current is also very high. So in the Gujarat coast, Professor Bhaskana was saying current can be as high as seven knots. So seven knot current is very high. Andhra coast is having three knot current. So extreme load the environment has to be calculated and this is you have to this is a statistical calculation or extreme value statistics you have to do. Uh, this is actually uh, you cannot go into details, but uh, you have to those of you who are will be going into this environment. So, extreme value statistics or in sometimes they call statistics of extremes. So, this is another branch of study anyway. So, this this has to be calculated, then from this you find out what should be your structure resistance. So, here you create coming coming. Here you create certain disaster scenarios with extreme loads. Okay. And then you find out what is the survivability criteria. Whether you, whether you can survive the whole thing, the disaster or not. So now there are certain cases where there, there are two things which you should keep in mind. That is, the platform is out of service. Now, which conditions will give you the out of service? platform. So, this is called down, down time and the other is what is collapse, structure collapse. So, this is actually the extreme load condition in which the, this is a disability criteria where the structure is disabled after a certain period of time. And then, uh, if it comes to collapse, of course, you cannot retrieve this structure. So, you have to create certain disaster scenarios with all these extreme loads, and you have to evaluate basically this is your structure response. Sorry. So, this is the the number of criteria which you have to uh, do it. Now, coming to the um, uh, layout of the structure that is the decks. So, modular deck, uh, now modular deck has these three configurations. Now, last class in the previous class I told you whether you go for a modular deck type construction or a integrated deck type. So, this will depend uh, largely on the, there are two factors on which these two depend. Uh, one is the cost and the other is your shipyard capacity. So, the shipyard may not be capable of handling a 2500 ton integrated deck. They, you do know may not have the crane capacity. Neither your deep water facility will be there. So, most of these structures if your jacket platform is say more than say 100, 200, 300 meters long, you got to have a deep water facility for taking the deck onto the structure. So, there are now the, the two installation criteria, one is called the 
hookup method and the other is called the float over method for the deck which will come and position itself on the top of the platform. So, nowadays actually you, uh, you can do in two ways one you can either you lift the deck up or you take the deck down on the truss. So, that is called a float over method. Now, in the hookup method actually it depends on the capacity of the cranes. So, all these things will play a part on which type of deck will come onto the platform. So, either modular deck or integrated deck and uh, remember this modular deck whenever you are going for the integrated deck type this will require more steel, steel weight is going to increase in case of the integrated uh, sorry in the other case I think the modular deck type because of this. So, module support frame. Now, here actually you can see uh, the type of decks you have, the module support frame is also quite vast. So, it is not a uh, simple structure. So, here actually this is your jacket truss and you have to build another truss on top of your the uh, underwater truss say like this. this is quite a substantial because this will look more or less like a bridge truss. So, this type of truss is built. So, this is your uh, module support frame or in short I am writing this as MSF. Now, on this you locate your deck modules. So, it will come something like this. So, this is your module support frame, these are your modules. So, this is normally they do it like this and the problem that is uh, will come is uh, the module support frame, how you are going to integrate this with the underwater template or struts. So, this is your template. these are the modules MSF and the other one is you will find the integrated depth type. This is a rather a closed form of deck. Now, integrated deck type actually you will find there are two or three decks inside the uh, platform. So, this is the integrated deck type and inside you will find uh, there is one deck, the top one is called the upper deck. And the lower one I think they have a special name, they call it the cellar deck, let me see. So, this is your cellar deck and the middle one you can, can name it as a mezzanine deck. This is a mezzanine deck. So, this the total thing is this is uh, enclosed. So, this is your enclosed. Enclosed deck just like your ships. Now, on the upper deck you place all your the deck uh, drilling rig etcetera will come somewhere here. Now, in this case there is no module support frame. So, that means in the on the upper deck actually these two decks the mezzanine deck and the cellar deck is taking maximum amount of load. So, that means your well head assembly. So, that is your conductor pipes actually normally they are laid somewhere here on the cellar deck. If you have a mezzanine deck there also you can go up here and uh, this you have to decide. There can be one deck out here or two decks out here according to the number of equipments and size of the equipments you will get. So, this has to be uh, clearly th thought about and uh, the integrated 
dick type so here actually most of the time you spend is uh, in the deck layout so integrated deck type is having an upper deck now this actually supports drilling production systems now what as a uh, naval architect or an ocean engineer what you have to do is you find out the weight uh, sorry production systems so all these things you have to make a uh, process process facilities then you have living quarters etc now this you have to do the ga drawing general arrangement drawing integrated deck now only the drawing is not going to help you but what you have to find out is weight center of gravity cg position that is your both vcg lcg everything uh, so uh, weight cg position area requirement now this has to be carefully configured in case of the uh, jacket platform now remember your jacket platform uh, the size of the truss will also depend on your what this what is the template doing template is essentially a support to the deck basic although it is uh, resisting your wave loads that is which you more or less study when we study your pile foundation so although it is resisting your horizontal wave load that is coming onto the platform but this is also acting as a support to the deck now the underwater truss has to efficiently support the deck such that the deck is not in danger of being toppled over or swept away mm. the deck fixity is of prime importance so here actually one thing that uh you have to decide is deck stability or they call it fixity deck stability and fixity to underwater truss now remember this is a steel construction <coughs> so that is however strong you make the underwater truss it it will have some displacement so that means normally you can take uh, you need not record this a say uh, 80 ft depth of underwater truss will give can give as high as 3 ft of deck displacement now remember this is a fixed structure not a floating type of platform so deck stability this is what that is why i mentioned deck stability stability of course uh, not in terms of your buoyancy but there is also a structural engineering they call it uh, the stability criteria structurally stable or not so structural stability will come from the main criteria is buckling buckling and bending so that is called uh, structural stability so deck stability and fixity to underwater trucks is very important so this actually from this you get deck displacement so in your finite element uh, modeling of the underwater truss you have to calculate what is the total stiffness of the underwater truss so if you make it very strong deck displacement will be reduced okay but at the same time this will also increase the wave load because stiffness will entail increase in member size the column and bracing member size will 
increase if you want to increase the stiffness okay so uh, that will happen anyway so you have to uh, strike a balance between these two now uh, deck stability is important and in case of jacket platforms of course you will anyway you will get a very minimum displacement but in case of floating platforms the deck displacement will be order of say 79 80 feet that is called deck percussion deck will have a percussion that is a surge and sway motion and all around it will go on so that will play havoc with your the uh, lifting of the oil from the well head but in case of the main reason why you go for a jacket platform is there are substantially reduced motions or practically no motions obviously in a jacket platform you will not get all these heat which surge and sway motions will not be there but only the structural that is the displacement due to what that is displacement due to structural elasticity so you remember that you are building a elastic structure so structural elasticity will give some rise to your displacement of the deck now how you reduce the deck of course that will depend on the stiffness mainly it will depend on the stiffness because the materials we are not changing material is normally mild steel we don't do with high standard steel because that is increase going to increase the cost of the platform so anyway so that is uh, the um, prime consideration in case of deck so the integrated deck type uh, this is the main this is first you perform the upper deck then you come to your cellar deck that is the lower deck remember in ships when you design well, how many decks do you call the upper deck so in between the upper deck and the tank top if you have another deck that is called a twin deck and the lower most deck or the sometimes so here also that similar term has come so cellar deck is actually the bottom deck now here the cellar deck now remember that you have to make what is called whenever you are doing a GA design remember this the, these are the prime objects which should be there in your you make a list say 1, 2, 3, 4 you write down each and each structural items now in case uh, in case of ships and offshore structure you make a weight normally they call it a weight summary if you go in your uh, this training you have to make this kind of table and this is actually a very tedious job hmm. now in ships how do you make it you first uh, on the left hand side you write down the serial number then you write each and every item now these items will be all these structural components say plating stiffeners weight summary uh, if you say uh, you can call this a structure first you make a structure weight history now in the in case of offshore platforms this is um, quite simple because the shape is not changing in ships you will find that you have to make a, a weight summary of the uh, shell uh, shell is having some curvature you see so how you break down the shell into number of stations and from each station you calculate the girth and from that you find out the weight so each the station will have this kind of weight summary so items you make here you write down the weight now this has to be made for ships also now, now next you write down the LCG VCG uh, your TCG position transverse center of gravity then you find out all the moments of all this and at the end you find out the whole structure LCG VCG TC so that is the main object of making a weight summary uh, so this is a detailed calculation which is normally done in the drawing office now in ships actually you will find that this distribution along with your hydrostatics 
along with your hydrostatics, you find out the LCB and the displacement. And here also after you add all the weights, that should match your displacement to a particular water line in case of floating structures, but not of course in case of jagged platforms. So here, so now this I have told you because you have to do it for floating structures or ships anyway. But similar thing also you have to make for in case of jagged platforms because your jackets, the main problem that you are coming from the jacket is your um, the structural design is mainly based on your external environmental load and this is fixed to the ground. So obviously buoyancy although it is there because of the submerged portion of the truss, so that will contribute to your the buoyant force, but that is not substantial. So your main, uh, that, that is the uh, um, resisting force is coming from where? In ships actually, ships the weight is being supported by buoyancy, but in this case the weight is being supported by what? Here the buoyancy, buoyancy is insignificant because your columns, pipes say will be very reduced thickness. But why is, is there any, uh, I think uh, for weight control is it critical or not? So it is uh, uh, um, critical in one sense because all your weight that is the load of the deck, the load that is coming from the truss, you will ultimately find it, its way to the where? To the soil. So your foundation is the, the foundation is going to give you the resistant force, not the buoyancy from the water. So here your foundation is not water, but it is the soil. So the resisting force and the moment is going to come from the soil. So that is why you have to the weight and the external load is very, very important in that case. So if you increase the weight on the deck, so unnecessarily you will be increasing the load on the pile foundation, isn't it? And of course the cost will go up. So that is one aspect you should remember. The other aspect is if you are not careful about so that means unnecessarily you subject the truss to have a larger amount of load. And if you increase the, the area of the deck, so the truss size is going to increase. Because although if you, you make the truss a narrower, your deck is going to become a curve like this because it is not going to have the edge support. So truss is actually giving you the support to the deck. The efficient support to the deck is coming from the truss. So if you increase the size of the deck, your size of the truss is going to increase. So now, now if you increase the spacing between the columns, so you have to increase the bracing size. Okay. And of course, the number of bracings will, will likely to increase also because of the uh, higher impact of the waves that will come. So that uh, considerations will come. And then coming to the cellar deck, actually cellar deck supports, first thing that it is going to support is, now in jacket structures where the blowout preventer is present, where you are going to locate the BOP. So this was the first item which I told you in your previous class. So BOP is normally located on the cellar deck, BOP or this is called Christmas tree. Now remember this BOP and a Christmas tree is not a very flimsy structure. So BOP Christmas tree will uh, weigh of the order of say a few hundred tons. So at a certain point on the deck, you have to make a foundation for this BOP Christmas tree. Then you have well head manifolds. Manifold is a junction of your pipelines. So there are a lot of pipelines which will be on the deck. Manifolds will have piping etc. 
So, where, where is the cellar deck? The cellar deck is just above the truss. So, this is your truss. So, these are some of the, the, the you will have other pumps, etcetera, and all these things will come. Now, suppose your equipment you find that the cellar deck area that you have allocated cannot accommodate all the equipments. Now, there is, the, there is a limit to increase in deck size, I told you, because unnecessarily, if you increase the area of the cellar deck, you are going to increase the um, spacing of the columns of the truss, which of course is not desirable because the client has to pay out more money for a larger truss. The, here actually the main structure is here or the underwater truss is the main cost consideration because of its uh, huge complexity, is not it. So, normally you try to limit the size of the deck. And if possible, instead of going horizontally, you try to go vertically. Vertically, if you go vertically, obviously there will not be any requirement for increasing the column spacing. As soon as you increase the column spacing, the size of the truss will increase and that will increase the wave load. And as soon as you increase the wave load, you will find that you have to increase the column diameter. Column diameter increase means the diffraction problem is going to come. So, a lot of uh, trade-offs are there. So, it is better to go vertically up. Now, if you go vertically up, instead of one mezzanine deck, you can have number of mezzanine decks, but also you are, you are increasing what? If you increase the size of the integrated deck, now the, all these, the, the sides are enclosed, the steel plates. So, your windage area is going to increase. So, main overturning, overturning moment is coming from what? The above water portion is coming from wind and this is your wave. Windage is going to increase in case of a tall kind of integrated deck structure. So, wind, wind problem has to be carefully configured. So, all you, you see whenever you start designing, uh, as soon as you design, you will find that you are coming with a lot of uh, restrictions. You cannot go on increasing arbitrarily. So, you have to be as an engineer, design engineer, you have to be very, very confident of what you are doing. That is every case there will be trade off optimization and all that will come. Well, the main reason is there are two prime considerations when you go for offshore structure design. I have told you one is your safety. You cannot play around with this and the other is cost. These are the two prime constraints you will come. Safety constraint, cost constraints. So, this uh, uh, these things will come and so this is the equipment that are going to be placed on the cellar deck and if you find that you are not having sufficient space, you go for a mezzanine deck. Now, mezzanine deck also um, may house uh, a drilling and production equipments. So, this uh, for a, if you go for an integrated deck type, you go for this type of layout. And remember from here, you make this your weight summary and calculate all the uh, weight and the area, items weight, another prominent is area requirement. You find out. Now, uh, the other uh, item is your modular deck. Now, modular deck, the main component is here. This you have to design this MSF. 
So, this is called a module support frame. Now, deck, um, whenever you are doing this approach, now there are two aspects which you should keep in mind. One is called the uh, dead load. You come across this. In civil engineering, you come across a dead load and live load. Now, deck, you will find there are these two types of loads. The dead load is normally your self weight so you segregate all the weight items into a dead load and a live load a live load is coming from moving and vibratory loads Now, this is mainly coming from what? This mainly comes from drilling. Now, remember drilling actually the vibratory load is quite large. So, this is your drilling load plus vibrating machinery. This will come from pumps, compressors, etcetera. So, this you have to analyze dead load and live load that is coming from the deck. There are deck loads. So, remember that you make a thorough history of the loads that are coming to your truss from the deck side. Now, coming to the uh, which one the model support frame is you this is a space frame. Now, this module support frame will actually transfers your load to your truss. So, this space frame actually transfers load from deck modules. to underwater truss. So, that is your main function MSF. Now, you position this MSF clear of the highest wave crest. So, this is called a air gap. The here this is a air gap. Now, in the uh, in the environmental basin or tank, they make tests. Suppose a wave comes and crashes on the deck. In any eventuality, what is going to be the impact on the structure? So here, with an MSF, you can have certain wave transparency because the water will pass out of this. But here, actually, the exposed since this is an enclosed deck that is you are getting a large amount of surface area to the coming water surface. So, here actually this deck horizontal slide will be more. So, normally you can carry this experimental work out in a normally this is done in a wave basin or a wave tank. So, you do, you do all these studies and after that now why all these studies are done in order to find out the dimension and the depth of the pile. Okay. So, that is anyway. So, that will come to later when we study your pile foundation. So, space frame transfer the main function is transfer of load from deck modules to underwater truss. Now, here the how efficiently you can do it that is based on your MSF design. 
No, you're drunk. Now, emissive sometimes you can envelop, envelop platform facilities. Now, a portion of this module support frame you can, what it means you can enclose. Say, suppose you enclose this portion where the uh, operational requirement is more, especially I told you that is the crew and all that will not like to operate your well head, your BOP and all that, it is better to enclose them because the personnel will be required to operate the BOP and Christmas tree. So, you will not like to wait, uh, enclose part of the cellar deck. As a part of the sorry module support frame. So, MSF envelops a platform facilities. Now, normally you will find the that is called uh, metering BOP etcetera is enclosed. So, that is uh, and the other is the so, there are two components, one is the module support frame in case of a modular deck and the other is the modules themselves. Now, modules have, modules are actually positioned on the module support frame, these are the modules on module support frame. So, modules will have living quarters. So, this will have heavy port, then you have uh, hotel accommodation etcetera. All this will come under living quarters. Now, you have utilities. Now, remember these uh, these will have different weights. All these modules will have different weights and not only that the you sometimes say this is your well head module. So, well head module will on top of the well head module you will find your the drilling module. So, the drilling rig will come here. So, module support frame has to support both your the BOP etcetera. So, if it comes here and on top of that the rig module. So, remember this. So, the module support frame you should not make it of uniform structural thickness it because this will largely depend on the weight of the modules. So, module support frame here will there will be extra strengthening. Normally, in ships also you do that, do that uh, in case of your FPSO or say drill ship wherever you have the moon pool and your drilling rig. So, that you make extra strengthening. So, similar thing you have to do it here. So, that will depend on the weight of these modules. So, that is why I told you the weight summary is very, very important in case of a deck design uh, ships or offshore structures. So, utilities will have power generation. So, these are called utilities modules. So, here power generation uh, generators will come here. So, there is just some of the items, then uh, production control room. So, if you happen to be in one of these platforms, the uh, control station is quite elaborate, just like your power station or a, this uh, 
normal chemical processing facility, this production control will have will require a lot of space. So, you do, may, may not have that much of weight, but you have to have all the controls, there your computers, your meters, your analyzer, etcetera, all this has to be clearly visible to the operator. So, that is as a ship's bridge, you know, more elaborate. So, that is called the production utilities module. The last one is your drill rig. So, this is a major weight item. So, here you find drill tower or sometimes they call this as a rig. Then you have what? Draw works. I think I have discussed about drilling, okay. Sorry, this is draw works. Then you have drill pipe. storage. Now, there is another problem in case of uh, jacket platforms. So, in, in while you are drilling, where you are going to store your drill string? The major, suppose the again deck design, I have to tell you that platform there are number of types, although this is a fixed platform. This will depend on the work requirement of the platform. So, your decks normally if you design, decks design for two types, for platform types. Now, what are these platform types? Basic thing that you have to design is drilling platform only. Or rather only drilling, only production. or drilling and production. Now, remember when you are designing the decks, you please find out whether what the operating operation and requirements of the platform. So, these are your main operation requirements. So, I, I am telling you again and again that all this has to be studied in totality. So, this is your main operation requirement or client requirement. So, sometimes your platform will be doing only drilling, only production or it can do both. Now, this will influence your deck design. Why? Because your the nature of the equipments will be different, not widely different, but some amount of difference will be there. And also you have the interplay or interface between the different systems. So, this will also largely influence your deck layout. Okay. Now, sometimes nowadays or um, uh, they segregate the drilling and production is better. So, if you want to start production at an early stage, so it is better you go for this type. That is you separate drilling and production. So, if you separate drilling and production, normally you go to a offshore oil field, you will find two platforms side by side. One is doing drilling, the other is doing production. Okay. But the problem is that it is more costly, but at the same time you can recover oil faster. So, that is the main object. 
and sometimes the accommodation instead of housing on the on the same platform you make number of platforms one you support your accommodation one is the processing facilities and the other will be doing this. actually you can spread it out into three different platforms so there are a number of options when you go to offshore you have to study these options which is going to be the most cost effective and which will give you the larger output whether you can assemble all the operations in one platform or you can spread out into say two or three platforms okay so th those things have to be uh, configured now that of course the uh, you have to talk with the client or what what operation requirements client requirements and all these things will be there so here anyway so what I was uh, discussing about the module support frame so this is uh, the in order to control the drill rig is the most weight sensitive area and the other last one you write is the production module so if it is a drilling come production so then you have the last one you write is your production module now after this you go for the detailed structural design so this is mainly your process process facilities uh, remember another thing when you go for this type of platform what i was talking about is the storage requirement there will be large number of uh, drill pipes or conductor pipes. So that means when you are going for drilling, you are uh, that is uh, you are um, drilling lengths of drill pipes. They are called drill strings inside the seabed. So where you are going to stack them? So you have large number of drill pipes. You have to stack them on the deck. So sufficient area and has to be allocated for storage of drill pipes and uh, storage of drill pipe is one item but even if you, if you are doing drilling also you should have storage for mud liquid mud because that is your main lubricant yeah, and most of these platforms you will find they have they a tanker comes and works along the platform and takes out the oil and sometimes these jacket platforms they have means of temporary storage of oil now, if you have temporary storage of oil, you should have separate um, volume for or tanks to temporarily store oil before it is transferred to a floating storage unit or a oil tanker. So, all these considerations will come when you are designing a uh, say uh, either this type of deck, integrated deck or a modular deck. So, deck design is a very, very crucial item in case of uh, jagged platforms. So, I think you can have some refreshment and we will continue with this structural design after this.